to recognize and pay tribute to the most notable entrepreneurial figures in the birth and advancement of the steel industry and the development of its global marketplace. American Metal Market presents the Steel Hall of Fame. This inaugural class recognizes the outstanding contributions of eight exceptional inductees from five countries whose work has spanned 150 years. From the industry's very beginning, Sir Henry Bessemer's discovery of a method of blowing air through molten pig iron to remove impurities and make steel revolutionized iron and steel making in the mid-19th century. The introduction of the Bessemer process in 1856 traveled from England to the rapidly industrializing United States, where it laid the foundation for the American steel industry. Andrew Carnegie was the visionary who centralized the steelmaking process. He constructed the largest steel mill of its time and essentially controlled the entire American steel production process. In 1901, Andrew sold Carnegie Steel to J.P. Morgan for a reported $492 million and shortly thereafter turned to a life of philanthropy. His establishment of the Carnegie Corporation created a humanitarian vehicle that, in the 90 plus years since Carnegie's death, has distributed more than the amount he had initially received from J.P. Morgan for the sale of Carnegie Steel. At the beginning of the 20th century, Charles M. Schwab was serving as the president of U.S. Steel Corporation. Schwab left U.S. Steel in 1903 to lead Bethlehem Steel. The very next year, he merged Bethlehem with the U.S. Shipbuilding Company. That union became Bethlehem Steel Corporation. And by concentrating on producing construction beams, steel rails, and plates for the maritime industry, Bethlehem quickly became one of the most profitable steel makers in America. Albert Gary was a lawyer by trade, but his rapid rise through the metals industry eventually placed him as the very first president of United States Steel, the largest steel company in the world at the time. Historical records indicate that in or around 1908, Gary began hosting a series of dinners, which brought together a number of top steel executives and led to the establishment of the American Iron and Steel Institute. Albert Gary also served as the American Iron and Steel Institute's first president. Yoshihiro Inuyama led the way in turning Japan into a global steel powerhouse. From pioneering continuous casting in the 1960s to being one of the first to recognize the new technology and install computer controls with Yawata Iron and Steel, Inuyama is credited with spearheading the re-establishment of economic ties with China. It was Inuyama who in 1969 spearheaded the move to merge Yawata with Fuji Iron and Steel Company, forming an industrial giant that in 1975 surpassed U.S. Steel as the world's largest iron and steel company. Yoshihiro Inuyama served as president of Nippon Steel from 1970 until 1973 then as chairman of Nippon's board of directors until his retirement in 1981. Ken Iverson is credited with revolutionizing modern steel production with the introduction of the electric arc furnace mini mill. As president of Nucor, he redefined the rudiments of grassroots steel making and pioneered a unique culture and spirit that came to characterize the best in class American mini steel producers. In 1969, Nucor opened its first mini mill in Darlington, South Carolina for the production of quality products for the low-end rebar and shapes market and moved up the quality spectrum into plate and sheet products. By the dawn of the 21st century, the U.S. mini mill sector had increased their production of thin sheet steel by eightfold, from two million tons when Nucor's Crawfordsville went online in 1989 to 16 million tons in 2000. 
Willy Korf was the first of the modern European steelmakers to bring mini mill technology to the United States. In 1969, Korf built a 500,000 ton per year mini mill in Georgetown, South Carolina. Georgetown Steel was the first U.S. mini mill configured in a European manner. Korf was known for his willingness to experiment in order to achieve optimum production. So, in the early 1970s, he partnered with the Midland Ross Corporation to install a pace-setting Midrex Corporation direct reduction plant in Georgetown, South Carolina. Later, Korf established a Georgetown facility in Beaumont, Texas, and became the owner of Midrex Corporation in 1974. Park Tae-joon would lead the rapid post-World War II and the Korean War industrialization of South Korea as the head of POSCO. Park found financing for his new mill in Japan and selected a site for its construction in 1970. 1973 witnessed POSCO's first blast furnaces producing hot iron in abundant supply. To no one's surprise, Park showed a profit after just his first six months of shipping POSCO steel. Over the next quarter century, POSCO would help to lead the rapid industrialization of the South Korean economy. Park would eventually serve in the South Korean government, and in 2002, this industrialist was named Honorary Chairman of POSCO. These initial eight inductees into American Metal Market Steel Hall of Fame are a stellar list of the exceptional and the great throughout the modern history of steelmaking. They range from key technologists, pioneering entrepreneurs, and great executive leaders, to the financiers who help transform the industry. You're invited to join American Metal Market as we celebrate this elite group in our permanent Hall of Fame expected to be announced later this year.